Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? About 10 years ago, I picked up an original NES. I never had one as a kid. I always wanted one. Back in the day, I would just have to go over to like a friend's house to play it. Finally picked one up, used off of eBay. I got a decent deal on it, but this thing to this day has given me nothing but problems with the blinking red light of death. After sitting in the garage for the last few years and me being kind of pissed at it and not wanting to deal with it, I figured, you know what, let's just, let's finally get this thing fixed. I'll show you the two kind of common causes for fixing the blinking red light of death. I'm pretty sure I know what it will take to fix this unit, but if what I have to do is too much for your case, I'll show you what kind of the easier method is to fix one of these that may be a more common cause mine's a little less common of a cause but let's hook this thing up and i'll show you exactly what it's doing all right so we've got a copy of old school mario brothers duck hunt here jam that guy in there so you can see nothing just blinking we're just blinking let's get the nes taken apart and i'll show you the two ways that you can go about fixing this Okay, so we've gotten the NES disconnected. I've taken the cartridge out, no wires, no nothing. So the first thing we need to do is get the top taken off of the bottom. How we do that is flip the unit over, get a Phillips head screwdriver and just start pulling screws out. This is pre game bit days, believe it or not. Uh, so Nintendo just used regular Phillips head screws on this. Uh, you know, back in the day, old school engineering before they realized people wanted to get in and start modding their consoles and stuff. There's something special about this kind of corner. My uh, regular screwdriver won't fit in there. For some reason, this hole is smaller than the rest. So you may need to uh, accommodate for that if you've got an interchangeable bit screwdriver like this one. The size of this chuck may not be uh, small enough to fit in that hole. And the top just lifts off like that. I should note that all those screws in the bottom are the same size. Just kind of standard Phillips, these kind of gold colored ones. So now we're in and boy, we've got a few more screws and a lot more parts to take out. Uh, these original Nintendos were kind of built like a tank. First thing we need to yank is this metal shield. This is for RF purposes. These screws are all the same. And what's nice is they are the same as what's used to hold in the case halves. So you can just kind of throw them all in the same pile. We more or less need to take everything out of the Nintendo to, uh, to troubleshoot this. Most of these screws should actually also be about the same. With the exception of these two. These ones closer to the front of the four that hold in the back here. Those are longer than the rest. They're not a whole lot longer than the rest, but they're enough to make a difference. So set them aside. We are getting closer and closer. Um, there's just a few more screws. If you look around here in the RF area, one back there and one in there. Let's get those taken out. And again, they're the same as all the others that have been taken out. I think the Nintendo, actually I'm, I'm pretty sure the original NES literally only uses two different kind of screws. Oh, I wish we could get back to those days. Now, pretty much the guts are gonna lift up and out. Um, let's get these wires disconnected. If you take a look, when I carefully flip this over, you've got three bundles here. Uh, there's one bundle each for the two controller ports, and then there's this main bundle for the power switch, the reset switch, and the LED on the front. Let's take a look at the bottom here. There's more RF shielding and that just kind of fits on. Um, notice the uh, expansion connector that Nintendo never used. Let's look at the top side here. The probably most common cause for the blinking red light of death on an original NES is this guy. This is the 72 pin connector. It's what your cartridges slot into when you plug them in. 
so that's the opposite you know end of the card edge connector on the cartridge itself um, obviously with these consoles being like 30 years old now um, and especially with you know who knows where these have been these can get corroded they can get bad the pins can get get bent I'm assuming that if you're watching this video you've probably already tried cleaning this the easiest way to do that is to get a cotton swab with a really long reach to it dip it in some isopropyl alcohol and just stick it in there and go back and forth um, you can also try some spray electrical contact cleaner if you get the kind with the straw and you can go in through the cartridge slot and spray that in there if you do that method make sure that you let this thing dry out for a while uh, because when you spray stuff it's gonna get in there anyway since we've taken all these screws out let's uh, get a closer look at that card edge connector here and we can do that by removing this kind of plastic cage that the cartridges fit into uh, it just pretty much just slides off but it's a pretty tight fit so here's the board this card edge connector assuming that you've cleaned it 72 pin and cleaning it doesn't fix it you can buy replacement ones of these uh, there have been people that have made replacement ones they're not terribly expensive either so all you got to do to replace it it's deceptively easy once you get the board to this point and it's taken how many minutes just a couple of minutes so far to get down to this this card edge connector just slides right off pretty easy just kind of gently go back and forth and it comes off uh, this in my case actually is a replacement card edge connector this is not the original one at least I don't think it's the original one uh, I do have another one which I believe is the original one but in any case this one's in really good shape I've cleaned it up I know this one is good so I'm going to continue on and show you what the other option is for fixing up one of these consoles when it gives you the blinking red light of death now I've got my soldering iron off to the side over here I'm gonna turn it on at this point because we're gonna need it let's talk a little bit about the NES lockout chip so on the circuit board we have the Nintendo lockout chip that's this guy right here what that chip did really was to prevent piracy and also people from importing games into regions where they shouldn't play them so for example it keeps people with an NTSC system like one sold in the US from playing games that they bought over in Europe so it basically prevents PAL games from playing NTSC vice versa these chips were custom you can't really buy replacements they were not off the shelf and for some reason these chips fail over time so what we need to do is disable this chip there are two ways to do so the uh, the cheat way is to use a pair of diagonal cutters and to go in here and cut pin 4 so that it no longer makes contact we don't do the cheat way around here if you've watched any of my videos where I'm doing any sort of how-to you know I don't do the cheat way I'm gonna do it the right way or at least what I feel is the right way and a way that makes this undoable so the reason why I fired up the soldering iron is I'm going to desolder this chip bend pin 4 and then resolder the chip back down uh, if, if I need to put that pin back in for some reason I want to restore the system to stock or whatever I'll have that pin still available on the chip if I need to I'm not damaging the chip and that's really the way that I like to do pretty much any of my mods. Uh, I like to make them undoable whenever possible. Yes, I know there's still a ton of Nintendos out there now, but that doesn't mean there's gonna be a ton of Nintendos out there a few years from now, a few decades from now. It is gonna take a little while for me to, uh, to desolder this, so I'm just gonna set this guy to fast forward and, uh, and we'll see what we can do. In case you're wondering this is not easy to do on camera and I started doing this thinking oh this will be a quick video right just go in there decide of this chip and the leg 
No. No, not so much. Okay, well, you know what I said about not doing this the cheat way? Well, as you look at the chip, you can see the writing is up. All you want to do is bend out the fourth leg. So one, two, three, four. Just bend this one away when you put the chip back in so that that leg won't make contact with the, uh, the through hole. I'm gonna re-solder this thing and then we'll just do the cheat way. So in an attempt to uh, make this so that I can indeed undo this in the future somehow, um, I'm gonna try and trim that pin down where it meets the board instead of at the body of the chip. That leg has been cut from the board and I've just bent it up and away. I cut it down at the board because now if I do want to undo this, I have a chance at bending that leg down and then just sticking a little solder bridge on there. Um, I really would have preferred to just pull the whole chip out, bent the pin out, and stuck the, chin back, the, the chip back in, especially since there is this room in here. I mean, the, it, that full length of that leg sticking out would not have gotten in the way of any other components, but eh, it is what it is. So now it's really just a matter of putting this whole thing back together. Hit fast forward again. All right, let's get this guy plugged back in and see what we get, huh? Okay, so moment of truth, here we go. We uh, got it all back together, plugged in. Here's the uh, same Mario Brothers duck hunt cart we did before. Push the button. Success, check that out. Playing, it's working fine. Looks good, no blinky red light, I like it. The benefit to disabling the lockout chip, other than fixing any of these, you know, potential red light of death type of issues, is now you can play pretty much any of the import NES games that you want. So anything that came out only in Europe, you can play in here, provided that you have a TV capable of accepting PAL video signal input, because they did use different frequency over there. Otherwise, you've got a working NES now. It really wasn't that hard to do. Um, maybe, maybe you do want to just do it the easy way and just clip that pin. Although if you've got the free time and aren't trying to do it on camera like I just did, I really would recommend desoldering that chip, bending pin four, and putting the chip back in and resoldering it. It's just going to be a lot better that way. Uh, you can undo it that way if you ever need to, to revert for whatever reason. Or if you just want to resell the console and be able to say, you know, with a clean conscience that this thing is as it was, you know, the, the way it originally shipped without any mods. Anyway, if you like this video, I always like thumbs ups. I do appreciate those. I have new videos coming out every Tuesday, so if you'd like to get alerted to those automatically, just hit the subscribe button right down there somewhere. And as always, thank you all so much for watching.